I am so pumped for today's episode because I got to attend the More You Know Pet Wellness Summit at the Nautical Dog in Williamsburg, Virginia this past weekend. And oh my gracious, there was so much incredible content from the speakers. The attendees were just the best ever, and I'm going to share it all with you in today's episode. So stick around. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Welcome back, bestie. Okay, so I traveled back home to Virginia. So those of you who know me IRL... (laughs) I'm trying to be all hip now. In real life, um, I'm from Virginia, the Hampton Roads area. So when I saw that the Nautical Dog, which is a gorgeous pet store, by the way, in Williamsburg, was putting on the uh, they're hosting a pet, they hosted a pet wellness summit with Angela Ardolino, Billy Hochman, and Dr. Judy Morgan. I knew I had to turn this into a let's visit family and do all the fun things with pets trip. (laughs) And that's exactly what it was. And oh my gracious, I cannot wait to share with you all the incredible things that were discussed and shared. First of all, let me give a huge Huge shout out to Amanda Wilborn, who owns the Nautical Dog in Williamsburg, Virginia. Her store is absolutely gorgeous. I posted a reel showing you a little bit around the store, and she is just an incredible person. I was very fortunate to get to spend a little bit of time with her and getting to know her, and she has actually owned the Nautical Dog, has been up and running for 17 years years, guys. She started the store when she was 20 years old. Holy moly. There's zero chance when I was 20 years old, I had that much ambition and, um, it has grown. She has three storefronts combined together. Now it is one of the biggest healthy pet stores I have seen. And the community she has put together of pet parents who want to do better for their pets was astonishing. It was a breath of fresh air (laughs) in a world where we can oftentimes feel like we're the loners, we're the oddballs, we are the people on like the fringe of society, right? Who are putting our pets needs in, you know, in our hierarchy of things that we just have to get done every day, we put our pets needs pretty high on that list. And for some people, they think that's crazy. And for others of us, um, we know that that's not crazy. So to be around people like that really um, energize, I don't know about you, but for me, it energizes me and really kind of pumps me up to want to put more content out for you guys. And, um, really lets me know that like our little community is growing and I am so thrilled to be part of it. And, and by the way, um, because I, I am also working on, you know, affirmations and and being grateful and, um, manifestation. I am, I'm thrilled that you take the time to listen to me um, and and trust me to bring you all of this wonderful information so that you can then go do the research yourself because that is the ultimate goal is to uh, give you little tidbits of information that make you run off down a rabbit hole because boy, don't we love our rabbit holes. So uh, let's get into the actual summit itself. So of course there was a VIP night That was amazing. Dr. Judy came in um, to take pictures with people. Of course, Billy and Angela were also there taking pictures with people um, in the store. 
so that was really fun. Amanda had, you know, refreshments and, and drinks and all, all of the things. By the way, in the Nautical Dog, she also has a cat cove where the Humane Society brings cats that are available for adoption. And she has adopted out she's only, she had it open for, I believe this past weekend when the summit occurred, it was one year, it was the one year anniversary of her cat cove. And literally hundreds of cats have been adopted from her cat cove in the past year. So I really want to give a big shout out to Amanda because obviously none of this would have happened without her. And I will have her on the podcast um, very soon. She is doing her, uh, if you are in or near the Williamsburg area, um, later in the month of August is her, her, the, her anniversary sale. So it's a huge deal. She goes all out it is a, it's a huge party, lots of savings. Um, I, I don't even know everything she's doing, but she is doing a ton. So please stop by if you are anywhere in the vicinity of Williamsburg, make sure you check it out after she takes a breath from that. I will have her on the podcast. So uh, Angela, Angela Ardolino, who has been on the show, if you remember, uh, back in, I believe, September of last year, August of last year. Has it been a year already? Oh my gracious. Um, I just love her to pieces. And she is the founder of CBD Dog Health, um, Myco Dog. She has the Your Natural Dog podcast, um, which she was gracious enough to have me on as well. And so many, she does so many things. It's hard to keep up with. She has um, grooming stores and all kind of a, a rescue farm in Florida, all, all the things. So she basically, now, if you're not, if you're watching the video, you're going to see this. If you are not, that's okay. If you're just listening to the podcast on your podcast app, no big deal. Um, but I am showing you the uh, magazine that she has available. And I will put a link in the uh, description of the podcast to where you can get a copy of this magazine. It is Plant and Mushroom Medicine for Pets. And basically her presentation went over what's in this magazine. Um, She started talking about CBD. Now we talk about a lot about CBD and I don't want to regurgitate all the things about CBD because that's what she talked about when she was on the podcast last year. So make sure you check out that podcast um, episode if you want like a deep, a deeper dive into CBD for pets, because we, I think a lot of us really have a huge misconception about CBD. Everything starts with the plant we call marijuana. And that basically there are a lot of different components when you break that plant down. The two main components are CBD and THC. And THC is what gives you that like high, quote unquote, high feeling. So if the plant that you uh, grow and then uh, you're producing and, and breaking it down to create, say, a tincture in the case of CBD dog health, if that plant has more CBD, less THC, it's called hemp. If that plant has more THC and less CBD, it's called weed or what people still call it marijuana. So I guess, I don't know, Mary Jane, am I dating myself by saying that? So, (laughs) um, when we are talking about CBD products, especially for our dogs and cats, we are talking about hemp. This is a hemp extract that is primarily the composition is going to be CBD with a very, in fact, the, it is such a small amount. What is mandated it has to be 0.3%, no more than 0.3% THC. So a very small amount of THC, but it is so important that it does have both CBD and THC and that very, very small amount, as well as other components like CBDs and CBGs, um, some variation of those other components to make it a full spectrum product. Because when, you know, we say this all the time, nature provides. So nature creates this plant and all of the components in their various combinations they live together synergistically for a reason. And when we try to 
uh, extract just one part of that plant and say, well, this is the beneficial part. Well, you may get some benefit, but you are not going to get the full effect or the full benefit that that plant contains when you rip away one piece, which is why it is so important. We do, we, we do not want to use a broad spectrum product. We want to use a full spectrum product. And of course, Angela goes much more into detail into this. Um, and again, you can go back to that episode. But that was kind of the gist of what she was talking about with CBD. And of course, she went over all of the incredible studies and the history of CBD and medicine. And uh, yeah, it was just an incredible presentation. Then she uh, talked a little bit about mushrooms. Um, and one of the, the key thing, one of the key takeaways that I wanted to tell you about um, as far as using uh, functional mushrooms or medicinal mushrooms uh, is that they have to be grown right. So whereas when we're talking about CBD in the U.S. at least, uh, the USDA regulates how those plants are grown. So there is regulation. And uh, I know CBD dog health uh, goes by the USDA organic regulation for how those, those plants are supposed to be grown. So we know there are no pesticides. So we know that they are truly organic, that we're not getting anything in that product uh, that doesn't need to be there or that shouldn't be there. The same thing is not true for mushrooms. They currently do not have that kind of regulation. So a lot, most <laughs> companies doing mushroom products, um, may not necessarily be growing them in a way that is beneficial to you or your pets, uh, the end user, when taking them. The two companies that Angela mentions that are growing them correctly is Real Mushrooms and CBD Dog Health, or MycoDog. So MycoDog is a tincture, so it is a liquid form, and they are triple extracted. Uh, real mushrooms are powders and pill capsules that are more of a functional food and also incredible, but they are being grown appropriately. They are being grown uh, on natural, su natural substrates, so like logs and things where you would normally find mushrooms growing in nature um, versus like oat or rice or some sort of grain substrate where we're going to pull more than likely that grain has glyphosate in it and it just it it messes up the whole product. So these are the two companies that we know for a fact currently as of July 2023 um growing the mushrooms properly to actually have all of the benefits that they should have. And I'm just gonna show you in this uh, magazine really quickly. I can pull it back up. All of the wonderful benefits. Um, this actually, well, there, there are more, but this just happens to be a um, listing of different types of cancers and what type of mushrooms help support and eradicate those cancers. Um, so for instance, bladder cancer, turkey tail is excellent for. Breast cancer, turkey tail, reishi, cordyceps, and maitake, uh, as well as chaga are also wonderful for. And I missed for bladder cancer, also maitake. So there's a whole list of these in this plant and mushroom medicine for pets, um, which again, this, this magazine I will have linked in the description below if you would like a copy of that. So that was kind of the gist of, and she also talked about, you know, CBD and mushrooms for um, cancer and, and different, different ailments in pets. So incredible talk. It was wonderful. Always love hearing from Angela Ardolino. Uh, let's take a quick break. I'm, uh, I, when we come back, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about Billy Hookman's talk and Dr. Judy Morgan's talk as well. So make sure you stick around. Uh, we're just going to take a quick break and I'll be right back. 
Today's episode is brought to you by the Furry Family Coach Dog Training. Train your dog in the comfort of your own home and on your schedule with video instruction from me. Learn the foundations of training, teach basic cues to your dog, and explore solutions to behavioral issues all inside of this video-based online training course. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to see you on the inside. Welcome back. Okay, so we are talking about the More You Know Pet Wellness Summit that the Nautical Dog put on um, last weekend in Williamsburg, Virginia. And I just told, told you all about Angela Ardolino and her, um, her talk for the event, which was incredible all about, of course, CBD and mushroom tinctures for dogs and cats. And, um, so after Angela left the stage, uh, Billy Hochman from green juju was the next speaker. And I, um, (laughs) How do I say this? His presentation was, I guess I want to say like a breath of fresh air because we tend to talk about the same things over and over and over and over and over again. (laughs) Um, Not because we don't have anything else to talk about, but, but because that like, there are so many people that still need to get the message and, and hear so, you know, you never know what you're going to say, when you're going to say it, that it's going like somebody's going to hear it and uh, trigger something. So, you know, there's a lot of like foundational things that we talk, of course, I mean, and of course, Billy's talking about nutrition, right? He is a food scientist, but we do talk about the same things over and over and over again. <laughs> And while it is incredibly interesting and we do like always pick up something new every time and different people have different um, concepts and theories and ways of presenting the same information that might resonate better with someone than than another person's presentation, um, it, it was very interesting and I very much appreciated a new approach, a different form, a different presentation of kind of, kind of the same information that, that we have. Of course, Billy um, talks a lot about fermentation too. And that's something that I I don't think many people talk about. So, um, he, his talk was about bringing nature back into your dog's diet, because the reality is that most of our dogs don't, live in nature. They live in a high rise condo or they live in an apartment or they live in the city. I mean, most of us live in the city. That's just how it is. I mean, even I live in the suburbs. So, you know, I, I still don't have a ton of nature for my dog. I have the backyard. We can go to the park. We can go down to the lake and hike, but you know, there's not, I don't, we don't live in the country. It's, It's just a different environment for them. And all of the benefits of bringing more nature into their lives. By the way, just side note here, the benefits of bringing more nature into our lives as humans is as astronomical. So think about that. Also, when we're thinking about um, how we can provide more nature for our pets, think about the benefit that it's going to give to you as well. So um, he was really just talking about uh, rotation, a lot of rotation. That was, I think, one of the keys that both really, when we look, when I look back at it, Angela was also talking about was rotate, rotating supplements, um, using different CBDs, using different mushrooms, because different, different mushrooms have different uh, medicinal properties or functional property. <laughs> You'll, <laughs> when you hear um, Dr. Rob Silver's episode, which will be coming up soon, he is uh, with real mushrooms. You'll understand why I'm saying functional mushrooms so much. <laughs> um, because uh, Angela, of course, was was still 
calling them medicinal mushrooms, but uh, mushrooms as a food are certainly a functional food, but then we also have medicinal mushrooms, which I think does better describe Angela's tinctures. But anyway, I'm going down a rabbit hole and getting off topic. So Billy was talking about um, bringing nature back to your dog's bowl, which I think is just, you you, some of us, I think, do it without quite knowing what we're doing. But of course, we're rotating proteins. We are, if we can get uh, if we can source, uh, uh, you know, regeneratively farm, I don't think he mentioned regener- regeneratively farmed animals, but I'm going to throw that in there. Um, organic, pasture raised, grass fed, you know, especially, you know, grass fed cattle, grass fed, grass finished. We are providing a completely different nutrient profile in the meats we're feeding to our animals versus if we're feeding meats from an animal that was factory farm raised. It's just a completely different nutrient profile. So of course, um, providing the best quality, um, understanding the sourcing of what you're feeding, feeding, uh, you know, grass fed, feeding, um, of course he mentioned eggs, which are wonderful. He talked about fermenting um, berries, which is fun and something that I think I'm going to try to do to see if my dog will eat them. She's not typically um, the kind of dog who will eat fruits or vegetables unless they are very, very well ground and mixed into her meat. She is she is a carnivore through and through. <laughs> so um, we'll see. I, I, I'll try to do a small batch. He also had an, uh, a recipe for fermenting chia seeds, which might actually be easier to get into my dog. Um, but hey, your dog may love berries and fermenting them may be a wonderful way uh, of bringing out all of the wonderful nutrients of the berry while decreasing the sugar of the berry. I know that's one thing, and he, uh, he didn't specifically talk about blueberries, but when, you know, one of the tips, especially if, if we think back to the Forever Dog Book and Rodney Habib and Karen Becker talk a lot about blueberries. And I know um, Kimberly Gautier of Keep the Tail Wagging kind of went through like the actual amount of blueberries she would be feeding her four large dogs. And she was like, this does not make sense. And also, if I actually fed this amount of blueberries to, I want to say blueberries, but I'm trying to actually pronounce blueberries for y'all. So (laughs) please be appreciative that I am altering my speech pattern so you understand me um, because I would say blueberries. Uh, But anyway, if she actually fed that amount of of blueberries to her four large dogs. First of all, she might go broke. And second of all, the amount of sugar is, would just be astronomical for their systems. They're not used to eating that much sugar in their diet. So uh, that was my thought process when Billy was talking about fermenting the um, berries for your dog because, you know, they really do have incredible benefits and we want to leave them whole because when we leave the fruit whole, we also get all of the fiber, which is how nature intended it. Um, And that provides just as much, if not more benefit than some of the macronutrients do. But then again, we don't want that much sugar in the diet. So fermenting the berries is a great way to bring out all of the, like, because it's almost like pre-digestion. So it's bringing out all of the wonderful nutrients of that food while decreasing the sugar load of the food. Uh, what else? Sardines, of course. Um, he does sardines a lot, bone broth. So yeah, um, that was just a really, I think, while I I do want to say a lot of the same information presented in a very different way, where it really makes you think maybe another level deeper on how, like, not just what we're feeding, 
but how we're feeding and how we can mix and match different foods and can we alter them in ways to actually provide more benefit like like with the fermentation so very very interesting um loved that topic and presentation and then um dr judy went on and that was boy dr judy is a firecracker i cannot tell you just how like I feel drawn <laughs> to her because of how she approaches. She's just very matter of fact, and this is what it is. And I'm sorry if you don't like it. <laughs> and I love that about her. And she talked about six. So I think the topic was like six ways to raise your dog more naturally, um, more holistically, but she actually ended up giving seven uh, ways of doing it. And it was kind of, you know, feeding species appropriate foods, minimizing vaccines, minimizing or eliminating neurotoxins. And, you know, there, there was a lot that, um, exercise, uh, gosh, if I can remember them all, the environmental toxins. So like, you know, plugins and candles and things like there was a lot of that going on. And then she continued to, you know, everybody stayed and they had a, a panel where the crowd just got to do a Q and A with the the three panelists. And it was super fun. I, 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 what I think outside of um, some of some of the ways that the information was presented, especially with Billy's talk, outside of that, Sitting in on the Q&A was also very refreshing because so many people in the audience asked questions that, and I don't know, I'm sure I have talked to you about this before. My husband tells me this all the time that I forget that people don't know what I know. And hearing people asking questions that kind of triggered in my mind, like, that's right. People don't know what I know. And it's, it, it reminds me to make content for everyone and bring up those like kind of more basic or fundamental concepts that the reality is a lot of pet parents just don't know. And the fact that you're listening to this podcast tells me that you are probably in the same boat that I'm in, that you have, you have done so much research and you are continuing to grow that knowledge base and learn more to do better for you and your pets. And it can be really difficult to kind of put ourselves back in that mindset of that's right. Most people don't know what I know and to kind of take things back a little bit and um, maybe get a little bit more back to the basics in probably a good portion of whatever content we are putting out and to bring those people along with us to to help them answer those questions that are like oh yeah man Come on, come, come on with us, because if you have that question, boy, do I have a world of information. I am going to change your world right now when I not only answer your question, but I take you so far beyond uh, what you think you want to know right now. <laughs> that, to me, just sounds like a fun time. So it was it was wonderful and i so wish you were there um dr judy does have other uh, uh, talks and events coming up so definitely check out her page if you're interested in seeing her live anywhere and yeah i think i think that about wraps it up it was incredible i again i so wish you were there and uh, if you have any questions about 
any of the topics I brought up today, please let me know. Reach out to me. Um, Instagram is the best, but if hey, if you want to reach out on Facebook or YouTube or TikTok, wherever it is, um, I do get those notifications as well. And let me know. And uh, I will respond to you and try to make some content around it as well so we can get that information out to others. I think that's all I have to say. So <laughs> I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you being the incredible pet parent that you are. Um, please give your pet some extra love for me and make sure to, if you're not already following the podcast, you go ahead and do that because there are some really, really great interviews um, in the shoot lined up and I can't wait to get them out to you. So with that, have a great rest of your day. Give your pet some extra love for me. Till next time. Bye guys. Oh, oh.